Okay guys, let's talk about stochastics now. Stochastics are very, very similar to RSI in a couple of ways, but there are some distinct differences. Now the first one is they're an oscillator, they're a momentum indicator and they're an oscillator. So in other words, they oscillate between the values of zero and 100. You can't get higher than 100, you can't get lower than zero. And the same way with RSI and they fall into an overbought and oversold condition. Now overbought, generally speaking, again, being very broad with this, um, each person will approach this differently, each trader will approach it with a different manner. Overbought is anything above 80 and oversold is anything below 20. So there's the general criteria for it. Now, it's a momentum indicator, so as we discussed, momentum basically means how strong the price is moving. Now, there's a slight difference in formula, and again, if you want to really drill down into the specifics, go on Google, download some white papers, some thesis reports, all that kind of stuff if you really want to get dry with it. But I'm just going to show you from a trader's perspective how we can kind of use it and frame it to make better trades with or avoid losing trades or perhaps get in a better zone to take the trades. That's ultimately what it's all about. And for me, that's what it's all about. So, okay, let's look at this. So the difference is that stochastics take into account where the price closed relative to the range as well as all the previous days trading. And you've got two lines. You've got a fast line and you've got a slow line. In this instance, I've got them shaded in blue and in yellow, just so you can see them on the screen. I think, you know, normal default colors are gonna be something like red or purple, uh, but you know what? It doesn't matter. That's not interested in colors. We're just interested in how it's gonna pinpoint good trades for us. So what does it mean? So it's two moving averages, basically. It's a moving average of the stochastic formula, a fast moving average and a slow moving average. And just like you'd use a moving average, traditional one on price, the higher the number you're using, the smoother it's gonna be. So a 200 period, moving, 200 period moving average is very slow to catch up with price. And a five period moving average is very quick and sort of follows price a lot more aggressively. So that's the difference between uh, an RSI and a stochastic. So let's have a look at some ideas. So generally speaking, you've got this first thing with all of these momentum indicators is that you have an overbought and you have an oversold condition. So overbought condition is anything above 80, as I said, any, any oversold is anything below 20. So how do you make that work? Same thing you do with the RSI. You identify a trend and then you look to fade the first counter trend cycle. So if you're an uptrend and the price starts to go to the downside, you're looking then for the first oversold condition. Great example here on the FTSE at the beginning of, uh, beginning of the year and end of last year. Good short, strong drive throughout December, a good move from 6,700 up to 7,300 on the FTSE 100. Counter trend move, stochastics then goes oversold and you're looking to buy that oversold area for the potential move back up to the highs. Okay, that's the broad way of looking at it. Now how to look at it a little bit more defined. So let's zoom in a bit. The good thing about stochastics is that you have this, as I say, the fast line and the slow line. Now what you can do is you can use the crossover point between the two to identify a bit more of an accurate area. Now I'm just gonna use this example because like I said before, I hate to cherry pick examples. Real world trading, examples are not always perfect you're going to get these examples so we're going to stick with this theme throughout all the videos FTSE 100 goes a nice drive up push the high side starts to roll to the downside your your idea being is that okay i've seen strength i've seen momentum i've seen a good overbought condition and by the way look how long that stayed overbought for which is now you will never fade the initial strength momentum with an over with an overbought trade never go short overbought. Let's quickly look at that. Actually, we first went overbought when the price was really 60, 6900 Is that yeah, sixty nine hundred almost, maybe seven thousand. Let's call it seven thousand, and then we stayed overbought all the way up to this final sort of candle here, seventy three hundred. So three hundred points. You're sitting through all that. That is not the way to trade stochastics. You guys, you guessed that by now. So you're waiting for that first oversold cycle. So we get the momentum in one side, yep, check, we've got high, overbought reading, check, indicating strength, price indicating strength, check, prolonged, check. Okay, first oversold conditions, wait for it. Now, price starts to get oversold here, but we're not jumping the gun. The point is for stochastics is you're waiting for the fast line to cross over the slow line. Now this happens around here, which is this candle here, this first green candle here. That's when you get your first crossover. Now, again, you get another crossover here, which is when your fast, fast line crosses over here. So these are your two kind of entries. In fact, let me make sure that's exactly the right. We may as well look at it. So see this red candle here and this 
uh, you, actually this red candle and this red candle here let's draw them back on so we can see where we are with price again never ever cherry picking or curve fitting things because this is how we do it uh, those are the worst arrows in the world <laughs> sorry about that guys but you get the idea that candle there that candle there so the point is that's when you are looking to go long now like the same with any of these indicators blindly taking it is probably not your best bet your best bet is to say hey the stochastic has triggered long here we're in a good zone in the, the day you've got to give the stochastic credit it gets you long in a pretty good area it's a pretty good area to say you know i'm looking for a, a move back to highs and ultimately you know we did get new highs from that so very nice trade nothing can pinpoint you know with precision ultimate precision where you've got such limited risk and it it's perfect every time but it's guiding you it's like all these indicators are guiding you so you're taking it on the crossover here or you're taking it on the crossover here if you had a tight stop I, my guess is you would have probably taken a stop as we push through the low on this one then when you've got the second signal here you take the long here and that gets you long pretty close to the low so your risk on that is is not a lot and your reward ultimately if you're targeting the high which is kind of what you should be my my i am um, premise anyway if you're training a, a first pullback type trade is you look for that subsequent test of the high i've got no qualms about taking it out as it tacks the high to be cautious of a of a double top or scaling some out but that's generally what you're looking for on that first pullback because again digressing slightly is first pullbacks normally take out the high second pullbacks a little bit broader third pullbacks a lot more you know long term and, and that's when you sometimes get your topping pattern so first pullback if it's genuine momentum and strength which we saw all the clues uh, 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 indicating that then you know we're going to take it so that's exactly what you do and if you want to go one step further you can say okay as the stochastics cross over again um and it's fast i'm going to take the trade out so in reality you go here you're stopped out here that's not a lot of uh, stop you go in here you you got your uh, by the way you obviously want to check that you're oversold oversold and then as it crosses back over again in the overbought zone which is here we know then we're taking the trade out so that's giving us a nice chunk of the move for a nice swing trade um however we may be trading that with with trading a cfd or whatever it may be